What if I told you that dogs have a secret language, that they speak to us all the time? If you're someone that pays attention to details, then you must have noticed how we raise our eyebrows when we recognize somebody. Hi, John. That, my friends, is a signal we give out unconsciously when we recognize a face. It's a silent hello and it works even when you do not say a single word. Try it on the street if you want and you will see what I'm talking about. And just like us, dogs use certain social signals to communicate. And today's video is about a type of signals called calming signals. So let's get started. So I'm going to show you some of the most common signals that dogs use to communicate discomfort. They will use these signals to try and tell you to bring things down a notch or two. Today we know of at least 30 calming signals and I want to show you how to read your dog in a better way by looking together at some of the most common ones. Signal number one is looking away. If you've ever tried taking a picture of your dog, then you must have noticed that the moment you bring the camera to his face, he looks away. Do you think this means your dog is camera shy? Well, perhaps, but what is certain is that he's not comfortable with having a camera shoved in his face. So look at this Dalmatian over here. He just wants nothing to do with the camera. He looks away and even when the model tries to bring his head back in position, he almost immediately looks away again. It almost looks like his neck is stuck to one side and I can assure you, he is not distracted by anything in the environment. He's just confused about the camera being too close to his face and he's telling us to stay away in his own way. The second calming signal is lip licking. Here the dog is uncomfortable about someone several times his size sticking a hand on top of his head. And can you imagine how you would feel if a stranger came up to you and placed his hand over your head the same way? I don't know about you, but I don't think I would feel very safe. You have to keep in mind that signals are usually expressed in combination with distance increasing or also with distance decreasing signs. So, and this can be a bit confusing. The same signal could be used by a dog to ask you to get closer or even sometimes to go away. And it all depends on the context. Let's have a look together add a few more examples. Here we have a tiny dog on a table with confetti falling down on him. Can you see the calming signals he's giving? He's giving several calming signals at the same time. He's looking away, lip licking of course, and he's also yawning. And if you look at his eyes, you can see the white in the corner which is a sign of fear. So clearly in this situation, the dog is not comfortable and he's doing his best to express his discomfort. Here's another example of a dog with a model. She's smiling and she looks very pretty. And can you see what the dog is saying this time? This dog does not seem to be familiar with her. And even though she's petting him, he's trying to look away. He's yawning, lip licking, showing white at the corner of his eyes. And once again, the dog is expressing himself by combining several calming signals together to let us know that he's not comfortable. Now, remember how calming signals can be paired with distance decreasing signs? Let's have a look at this golden retriever, for example. His eyes are soft. And he has also dropped his ears to display a more rounded head. So even though technically the rounded head is a calming signal, 
you can still see that this dog is visibly more relaxed. Now, let me use another example to show you an opposite situation. Let's have a look at Snowy. He's also displaying a rounded head signal. And can you notice something wrong? His body is stiff. So even though he's displaying the same rounded head signal, in this context, Snowy looks unhappy about being touched. He's trying his best to look like a puppy to avoid upsetting the human touching him. And do you know that you would also see the same kind of language when a dog is being yelled at? Some call it the guilty look. They would even say, look, you see, he knows he has done something wrong. Well, not quite. When the dog walks slowly, lower to the ground and looks away, he's just afraid and he's saying, please don't hurt me in his own language. It's the human's job to understand these signals and to slow down. The last two calming signals I want to talk about are ground sniffing and the play bow. I took this video of Sadie during one of our puppy classes. So Sadie was late, as usual, and the group had already gathered. From a distance, she was intrigued. Her ears were upright and she was trying to understand what was happening. And when she got closer and felt overwhelmed, she immediately dropped her head and started sniffing the ground. She kept walking slowly until she recognized me and immediately displayed the round head signal. And this is when she sees the rest of the dogs and feels overwhelmed. Her hair stands on end and she starts greeting. Now, if you look, you can see all the emotions going through her head, clearly visible in her body language. And finally, the play bow is simply an invitation to play. This puppy is seeing his reflection in the mirror and trying to invite the other puppy for a play session. A play bow is usually a distance decreasing signal. So, Dogs are social and pack animals. And just like with the humans, communication helps them avoid conflicts. They hunt together and they protect their territory together. So from an evolutionary point of view, a dog cannot afford to get hurt. And also he cannot afford to have his bodies get hurt. So he would not want to hurt them. Because dogs that belong to stronger packs have better chances at reproducing and passing down these traits, these calming signals will help everybody stay safe. And that's why I feel so sad to see a lot of so-called trainers teaching people to punish calming signals. Think about it. When signals are punished or ignored, someone will get hurt. Fear cannot be treated with fear. And punishing a comic signal can result in the dog biting without warning. And that's why we see so many dogs turn aggressive just a few months after graduating from a training farm. If you'd like to learn more about dealing with aggression, please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because we will be talking about that in upcoming videos. And for those of you who would like to learn more about comic signals, I would like to recommend a beautiful book by a Norwegian trainer called Turid Rugas. Her book is called On Talking Terms with Dogs, Calming Signals. This lady is the reference when it comes to calming signals. She literally wrote the book. It was my pleasure and privilege to make this video. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it. And see you next time.